Welcome to Sage of Aquam. and today I'm doing your Lunar Intuitive Spread for the Solstice. So in the Southern Hemisphere we are experiencing our Winter Solstice and we've just gone into it over the last 48 hours. Um, and in the Northern Hemisphere that would be the opposite end of the scale, that would be summer solstice. So we are in the summer hemisphere, so we are doing the winter solstice. But it's the same energy, just inverted. So next year we'll be swapping out. So I'm just going to start the reading. I can't run away, and I love it when I can't run away. And that is Enso. So this is a Zen circle, and the Enso is about being free. So let the spirit create through the physical body. So, um, so basically, pressure on people to be somebody, be a particular person in a particular group of people in a particular fashion, uh, and and it's um, it's basically all this Zen Buddhism um, philosophy is saying that traditionally this is a sacred symbol of the Zen Buddhism and it is drawn with only one brush stroke so it is not ever going to be perfect so it says let go of perfection too many um, it uh, doesn't allow for any modification this happen, basically happens um, and this circle exists as it is. There is a beauty in perfection, and that is the teaching. We must learn to let go of expectation and comparison, and accept our inner most selves. Seemingly simple, but there is an endless complexi complexity to this um, kind of, to this philosophy. And so, the Swiss happen circle is a manifestation of the true to me. Of the true um, individual and that is you. So consider too, Enso represents you at the very moment that you drew it. Okay, so that just fell over when I just said that. At the very moment that you drew this symbol, you were in the present moment. So that is the teaching, is that our beauty lies in imperfection. Hello, um, welcome back. So I lost power there. Perfect example of imperfection. So I'm looking for cards for the solstice. So down in Southern Hemisphere we're doing the winter solstice. So now the days are getting lighter and we are increasing in our illumination. So I'm looking at that in depth. Alright, well first of all I'm going to start off by saying this is why the energy might be bunky. So I've got a number 1 which is, equates to a number 10. This is the dark side of the moon. This is shadow work. So this is probably why we've been getting all that bunky energy because um, this is uh, deep subconscious level energy. So I picked three from uh, Moonology Manifestation and I picked three from Moonology Oracle Cards um, and I picked three from the Moon Magic. I'll come back to them. So we'll start off with Find a Balance. So I've been getting out Yin Yang uh, under this vibration and I had I Am Balance on the Gravity Door. Okay so there's something trying to balance here. We've also got Leo lighten up probably because of this shadow work it's just getting under everybody's skin and people are doing sort of slime bag antics you know just being like negligent creeps and um, the best thing to do is just to sort of laugh at it or catch them if you can and then we've got believe in good luck um, because it's out there even when you can't see it, it still exists. Um, so also another reason why we might be getting bunky energy is because of the eclipse season. 
So conclusions are within reach. I'm thinking that this balance is a main theme. This is also about balance. Balancing perfection with imperfection. Just let things roll out as they're meant to. Don't force it. That's what I'm getting the sense of the just don't force things to happen if they're not, you know, not meant to be perfect, don't force it. So we will read these ones up the top in full because I think that they really draw it together. So it's about finding a balance between your own needs and what you do for others. So focus on your own wants and needs is understandable. We all need to look after ourselves. We all need to look after ourselves. This, however, this card suggests you need to find a balance between what you need versus what someone else needs. Walk a mile in their shoes. Once you understand where they're coming from and why, you can take action. Okay, possibly you've been through a worrying time as well in regards to health. Um, and this card reminds you to find the right people to help if you need help yourself. So it also is about making up your own mind. Don't let other people make make your mind up for you. Um, so it says, remember that we're all co-creating. So other people on your side by being understanding is a win-win. Your manifestation affirmation to be is love all around me. I am lovable. So that's that's really nice. That really ties ties together this energy. That's yeah, just really a bit of mix and match. Um, so I've got a bit of Scorpio here, and I've got the release card inverted, which means a number one. So I've got a number one energy here. One is primary, one is one is myself. So it's about bringing the energy back to yourself. Okay, I'm just going to find the protagonist, so this doesn't go on too long. Spirits died on jealous. Voices. What other messages for my subscribers, please, so that I may guide them? Right, Scorpio fears. Yeah, the fear, fear definitely came up in the uh, divinely orchestrated. Could be a bit of Cancerian around. Yeah, the number one is prominent. One and zero. There's a zero. There's a one. So that's a number one. That's a number zero. Number 10, things can get too much or not enough. Or it's about assimilating whether or not you're on the correct path. It's time to contemplate. It's time to negotiate with number one. I want to show it because I feel that it's... All right, I'm going to just put a couple back. All right, so what have we got? We've got fears. We've got the number 10 and the number one. Release. What have you not released? So it's what do you need to release? So what have you not released? What are you retaining? What are you holding on to? We've got number one and number one. What are you holding on to that you think you need? It says here, don't do it out of fear. You know, it says to see the bright side. Even if you feel you need this energy that you're holding on to, Believe that something better will come along. That's the feeling that I'm getting here. Believe that something better will come along. Or somebody does not want to let go. That came up in the divinely orchestrated. Somebody does not want to let go of something. Okay, it's not healthy. Alright, so we're going to look at number one. The dark side of the moon. Actually, we've just gone to the black moon page. So the black moon is um, inverted. Opportunity, chance, progress. Okay, so I'm getting a stalling energy here, which is what I found in my previous two solstice readings. There's a real stalling here. So the black moon occurs when two new moons fall within the same calendar month. And again, this is indicative of the time of rare moments. When you draw this card, you are being given another shot. Okay, so this could be a missed opportunity. This could well be a missed opportunity. So this card is very much like the new moon. So we did just had the double gem new moon in Gemini. But this time around the power is magnified. So number two is about a startup, but it's in the reverse. So something hasn't 
something was meant to start up. I got number four, I got stability here. So this was a this was a long-term commitment that was supposed to start up. Uh, I've got current engine number six, so things are things are moving along quite gently, quite happily. But then there's a big storm. Um, so don't let fear stand in your way. So I've got the fear card here. Um, for this card indicates that universal energies are on your side and that positive things will come to you if you are brave enough to take the leap of faith. Okay, so looks like fear got the better. Fear has got the better of you and this new beginning has not gone along as planned. Okay, don't worry, that's okay. Maybe you need to release more things from your life. I think we'll read this one, the fears. I think the fears is coming up. So potential secrets rest when the dark moon comes up in the readings is speaking of things that are yet unknown. Okay, so this could be fear of the unknown. Okay, it's, that's like a shame because a lot of opportunity is really exciting. So this is kind of potential growth and transformation. All growth begins in darkness during a time of restoration. This could also be about secrets yet to come to light. Um, so this is a time where it indicates a short break uh, from any ritual. Um, and this also indicates a short break as well. So this is a time of pensiveness. There's a lot of cerebral energy going around, so it is take advantage of thinking things through. This is brought up conflict, blood on the moon, trouble, caution. Yeah, it's possible that this opportunity was a con, you know, a ruse. So this a reddish hue around the moon is considered to be unlucky uh, from, you know, over many, many, many millennia. Even um, red sky at night, shepherd's delight, red sky in the morning, shepherd's morning. It's always been a warning to see red in the sky. Tensions are usually running high when a blood moon shows. Mixing with the wrong people or inviting troublesome characters into your life. Especially with the night show, which did actually come up uh, in the double gem. So it's possible. It's What I'm feeling is it might be good to do some, like, protection rituals. In fact, I'm just going to put my tourmaline on the table because I'm, I'm getting the feeling that this energy is a little bit um, toxic. Alright, I've been getting through a lot of toxicity so I just wanted to add a few extra crystals here to protect myself, to protect my energy. Okay, so I'm thinking that we might look into doing some protection casting. Um, so we we're just gonna, I was just gonna have a look at this one. Yeah, I got the exploitation energy as well. So I think that people take advantage of this sort of energy and go on a bit of a rampage. All right, work three fees. This card suggests a rebirth. Okay, so that's the second time it's come up. It's come up in the double gem, rebirthing. Think of your situation as a phoenix that's rising from the ashes as the birth, death, rebirth paradigm. Whatever you've been through, there's a new start ahead. It may be a little dark, as it almost certainly won't be rainbows and unicorns, but it will be about deep transformation. Okay, deep transformation. Okay, so so basically during the solstice, um, we could be experiencing a little bit more of the fifth dimension and um, gateway. Um, and people are probably in a bit of a panic if they haven't prepared for it. So this card also suggests that if you know you are magical then this is the time to start to work your magic okay so if you feel that you're somebody that can work magic then this is the time to be doing a bit of spell work um so this is also because of the scorpio it's also about sexual energy let's move on from jealousy and stop being obsessive uh, the, jet, the scorpio is the sign of death and rebirth magic and shaman its energy is a little bit dark occult, even scary. Not all of us like to face the shadow, but Scorpio demands it. In fact, it's through working through your dark side that you get to the light. Okay. Awesome.
Okay, so yeah, we've got some. Um, we've got an opportunity that possibly wasn't that great. I'm picking up conflict here on this. Um, okay, so there's a lack of the startup and conflict and opportunity. Okay, um, somebody or a group of people or some some people just may see you as someone that's a little bit too hard basket. You know, a little bit too deep and mysterious. But that's all good. That's all good. Okay, that's all good. All right, so that, you know, who cares? Who cares if people can't handle it? You know, it's like we're, we're living in the age of Aquarius. 